Hey everybody, this is example number one for structural analysis of trust, trust deflections using the virtual work method. The problem statement that we have is we're asked to find the vertical displacement at joint C of the steel truss shown below using the virtual work method. And the cross-sectional area of each member in the truss is 0.5 inches squared and Young's modulus is equal to 29,000 KSI. And here's our truss. We have a pin support at A, a roller support at joint D, and we have at joint B and C, we have concentrated load, loads equal to 10 kips, and we call those P, 10 kips here and 10 kips here acting downward. And this truss has three spans, so from A to B it's 10 feet, from B to C it's 10 feet, and from C to D it's also 10 feet. And the height is also 10 feet. And we need to find the deflection, uh, the vertical displacement or deflection at joint C. Before we proceed to the solution, I just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley. Let me show you their website. And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. And Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. And I have used Bentley software and I can say that the software was very easy to use and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. So here's their website, it's Bentley.com, and there's a, there's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you just want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels so please check them out. And now going back to our trust problem. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the support reactions and the member forces due to the applied loads. So here's our trust. So we're going to use, a, we can, you can use a method of sections or the method of joints to determine the normal force in each member. And these forces are caused only by the real loads acting on the truss. And so we're not going to go through each and every joint and each and every joint, but this is the actual values. If you go and use method of sections or method of uh, joints on the truss, you'll find that so we have the real loads are here we have a downward force P at joint B and downward force of, of P at joint C and so we have upward force of the same values at joint A and joint D and then based on that uh, using this we can use a method of joints or method of sections and calculate the internal forces the internal normal forces whether they're uh, ten tensile or compressive forces for each of these members so for member AB we have a tension force P member BC it's also P member CD it's also equal to P tension force member CE is P uh, for internal force equal to P uh, member FB it's also P member FE we have an internal force of P but it's compressive so that's why you have negative negative P and then member BE it's zero the f internal force is zero and then for member AF and ED uh, the internal force is compressive and it's equal to P times the square root of two that's why you have a negative sign because it has a compression force in it okay so once you've gotten all the compressive or tensile or all the normal forces within the truss members, the next step, and one thing, uh, this is, I just used a P instead of the actual numbers just to make things simple. Because sometimes um, when, you actually, when you use actual numbers, you deal with decimals and things like that. So 
we're going to plug in the actual numbers at the last step of the problem. So next, we're going to apply a virtual load and remove the real loads and calculate the support reactions and member forces. So, so again, we have our truss. And we're going to place a unit load on the truss at the joint where the desired displacement is to be determined. So we're going to apply a unit load at joint C. And this is what we have done here. We have applied a unit load one kip acting downward. And we've removed all the real forces. And the load, this unit load, virtual unit load, should be in the same direction as the specified displacement. So we're trying to find uh, we're trying to find the vertical displacement at C. That, that's why we've applied a vertical uh, concentrated load at C. And so with the unit load placed and all the real loads removed from the truss, again, we're going to use a method of joints or the method of sections and calculate the internal force in each member. So here's our reactions. And, um, and, and at joint A, we have a reaction equal to 1 over 3 kips. And I didn't write K, but all these values are in kips. And then at D, it's going to be 2 third kips. And, and then at, uh, at, in member AB, the force is equal to 1 over 3. And then in member BC, the force is equal to 2 over 3 kips. In CD, it's equal to 2 over 3 kips. In member CE, the force is equal to 1 kip. And then in member ED, it's equal to negative 2 times the square root of 2 divided by 3. And the negative means that this is in compression, and positive is in tension. And in member FE, it's, in, it's the normal force is equal to negative 1 third, so compression. Member BE, the force is equal to negative square root of 2 over 3, so it's compression. And then in member FB, the force is tension, 1 third kips. And then in member AF, the force is equal to negative the square root of 2 over 3, so this is compression. So now, once we've done this, the last step is to apply the virtual work uh, method equation and solve for the deflection at C. So I did this in Excel, and, and you can make a table yourself, but essentially what we'll have to do is make some type of table. So here's a table. So first, it's important to look at the inputs. What we have is, so the actual load that we had was equal to 10 kips. That's the P value. And the virtual load we applied was a unit load equal to 1 kip. Cross-sectional area is 0 0.5 inches squared. And Young's modulus is equal to 29,000 KSI. So now we've constructed this table. And here in the first column, we have all the members. A, B, B, C, C, D, and etc. All the members. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine members. In the next column, here, we have the internal force of those, of those members when we apply the unit load. So for the second column here, we go to our, we go to the previous step we just did and look at all these internal force values and just plug those in corresponding to that member. So like in member AB, the, the internal force due to the unit load uh, was equal to one third and then BC is two third. So just go down and do, do those for, uh, just input the values for all of those members. And then in the third column, we have the the internal force that was due to the real forces. So th for this we have to go two steps back or basically the first step and look at all our real forces and just take those values for each member and plug it in based on the appropriate member. So for member AB the load was P, that's equal to 10 kips, this is P, P, so just go down the line and just uh, fill it out. And then L here, the fourth column, is the length. And we just you can just get that using the basic geometry or trigonometry. And just plug in the values for the length of each member. And then the fifth column here, we just multiply 
the the middle um, the middle three columns. So we just multiply this n little n, and then multiply it by big n, and then multiply it by the length for each member. So small n times big n times l. So the so the internal force due to the unit load times the actual internal load due to the real load times the length. We do that for all the members. And then here, we do a summation. And we get 616.176. Okay? And now we can apply the virtual work uh, method equation. And so applying the equation of virtual work, we can determine the desired displacement. And, and it's important to retain the algebraic signs for virtual and real normal forces. So what I mean by that is it's important to make sure that if, it's, if, you're, if the force in the member is negative, make sure if the force in the member is compression, make sure you show a negative sign. And then if it's, uh, if it's, po if it's in tension, make sure you have the positive sign. Okay? So now here's our virtual work uh, equation. It's 1 times delta. And again, n, small n is the internal virtual normal, normal force in, a tr in the truss member caused by the external virtual unit load. And then big N is the internal normal force in the truss member caused by the real loads. Okay. L is the length of the member. A is a cross-sectional area of the member. E is a Young's modulus. And then one here is the external virtual unit load acting on the truss joint in the stated direction of displacement. And then delta here, it's the external joint displacement caused by the real load on the truss. And this is what we're trying to find. So now we have 6,000, uh, six, uh, excuse me, it's equal to 1 times delta is equal to 616.76 divided by AE. So just simplifying it more, we have 1, ki one kip times delta uh, C vertical equals 616.76 kip squared feet. And then we multiply by 12 inches per foot to get it into inches. And then we actually plug in the actual values for the cross-sectional area and Young's modulus. And then we get the final displacement in uh, the vertical displacement at joint C. And this is the real displacement is equal to 0.51 inches. So this is the end of this example. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Check out the website. It's engineeringexamples.net. And like the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. Thanks.